I'll give this to Secret Society of Second Born Royals. It made me realize something I never quite put together until now. When Disney does a story involving royalty, particularly a prince or a princess, if it's animated, it's probably gonna be good. If it's not animated though, it's probably gonna suck. Literally, the opening line shows how much Disney doesn't understand their own property. It starts off with the narrator saying, you know that story about a princess who's saved by a prince? This isn't that kind of story. Oh yeah, we're not doing that cliché genre, we're doing about five or six other cliché genres. In fact, even mocking this cliché genre is already becoming a cliché genre. Disney itself mocked how overused this is. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Yes, what is up with that? But don't worry, Disney fans, we're not doing that this time. Oh, let's just jump into this. The story centers around Princess Sam. Her sister is soon to become queen of... Honestly, I don't even remember if they say, and it doesn't really matter because... Sam hates the matriarchy and constantly tries to protest against her. Oh, did I say protest? I mean start a rock band! Yeah, this is one part Lemonade Mouth! When both her sister and mother say stop trying to sabotage us, you little brat, and do something with your life, she discovers at her school, filled with other princes and princesses, because of course it is, that she has special powers. In fact, any second born of royal blood just happens to have super abilities. Yeah, it's not evolution like X-Men. It's not even some radioactive shit like in every other comic book type thing. It just kinda exists. It exists because high schoolers and superpowers are a thing, so why not high schoolers, superpowers, and royalty? Oh, and you know, rock bands. Not enough check marks on our popularity list? Well, let's see what else we got. Sam doesn't want to be a princess. Yeah, that's a new twist. But when she discovers the power of friendship, she finds out more and more about the importance of listening. In fact, she discovers that her sister actually doesn't want to be as much of a matriarchy anymore as much as open things up to parliament so the people have a say. Aw, all Sam had to do was listen. Yeah, you know what else would have helped if her sister said that? Seriously, like half this movie is them fighting and the sister had to say one thing and there wouldn't be any more fighting. The evil bad guy that escapes out of jail and wants revenge and here's another twist you haven't heard has a connection to one of the main characters. But that we gotta rock out with our best friend that used to be our worst enemy. This movie tries to combine every past popular Disney Channel movie into one. Which is ironic because those movies were already trying to combine a bunch of popular Disney Channel properties as well. You name it, this is Descendants, Princess Protection Program, Lemonade Mouth, Camp Rock, and a strange part of me could almost see it working if it had any, any sense of satire. If it just had even the tiniest understanding of humor. And it doesn't, man. And when it does, like when Sam's best friend has to be told what's going on and she says in one incredible run-on sentence the absurdity of this plot, the best friend doesn't even give that big a reaction. Because that would be funny. And makes sense. And I don't know if that's allowed in live-action Disney anymore. Even the properties they're ripping off they can't steal that well from. Like at the end they're told that they have a jet. Ooh, a jet for the secret society to fly around in. Aren't you thinking of like the X-Men jet or the bat plane, something like that? No, it's just a private jet. How boring is that? There's not even a little logo on it or little missiles or anything. It's just a freaking private plane. Who gives a They can't even capture the cool elements of the cool things they're taking from. Alright, alright, so is there anything good in this movie? Uh, good's not the word. Let's say passable. The acting, for the most part, is passable. There's occasional exceptions with their narrator mentor teacher, who sometimes will just say lines like they're meant to be in a trailer. And Sam herself sometimes, especially near the end, will say these exposition-y lines that are said so bad, I kind of thought the idea was like she was being recorded and she was gonna play it back for everyone to hear, you know, purposefully acting bad, and no, no, it's just a real performance. But a lot of these actors are young, and honestly, I can see them going on to better stuff. And they're not really given material that can sound very natural. Everything is just so over-explained and not personal or realistic. It just doesn't sound like how real people would talk. So the fact that there was any charm from any of these actors, I think is quite an accomplishment. But no, this is bad. Really, really bad. <laughs> At least in some of the bad Disney Channel movies like Lemonade Mouth, I could kind of laugh at how absurd it was, or, you know, Camp Rock and Camp Rock 2. They're just so stupid, I gotta laugh. 
And maybe that's because I do see some possibilities in this, you know, with the actors and the production design, and yeah, none of it's great, but, but it's confident. I mean, you can tell a lot of money went into this. For the most part, there's a scene where a bunch of butterflies save Sam, and it's... It's hideous, but I never got anyone on this movie wasn't trying, except for, you know, the writers. Who probably had a day to turn this script in, because Disney's just like, hey, these things are still popular. This is just the most shallow of shallow. If they're not saying exposition, they're saying lessons. And if they're not saying lessons, they're saying buzzwords. And if they're not saying buzzwords, they're referencing something that's popular at the moment. In fact, just call it that, the secret society of references. If I haven't made myself clear, skip this piece of